and rolling. Don't you look lovely in your winter sweater. Thank you. Pullover, sweater, what is that? <laughs> silk shirt. And a silk shirt. Yeah. And, uh, and thermal underwear. Yes, <laughs> here we are. It's a must today, that's for sure. It's very cold. Yeah. Actually, it's warmed up quite a bit. It's yeah. uh, 20... Yeah, something like that. Bearable. Something. It'll be we were, 70 in a couple of days. We were down to what, 12, I think? 14? Something like that. 12 or 14. So, not as bad as last year, but moving on up. All right, well. So much for the weather. Try to refrain from speaking too much. <laughs> Please don't. Because I always have to edit myself out of these videos. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I, there, um, I always look through the questions because people have some great questions. Right. As always. And um, one of them was, uh, did Derek and the Dominoes rehearse before you went out on the road? Yeah, we did a lot of rehearsing at Eric's house. Uh, cause that's where we were all living, in Hurtwood Edge. And uh, uh, we had the living room set up. I bet there's tapes of all of that stuff. But we had the living room set up with uh, Jim, Carl, and Eric and me. And uh, matter of fact, one time this neighbor complained because we were so loud and we had to tone it down, you know. Was this all in preparation for going out on the road? Well, yeah, it was the, when we put the band together, it wasn't in a, a time uh, lapse, you know, everything flowed. Mm -hmm. So as so soon as we put the band together, all the recording and then everything and then the tour and all that just happened, you know. And so our rehearsal was... Sorry, there was a call coming in at the same time that was stopping <coughs> okay. stopping you. Go ahead. Okay. Again. But uh, we uh, we were we were we played together. You know, we see Carl and Jim and I had already been playing together for nearly two years. Mm -hmm. You know, Eric came and played with us when we had Delaney and Bonnie and friends. Uh, so I mean, we were already real tight. You know, but. Uh, it, it all happened, and, 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 and it was like it was predestined, pre-planned. Everything fell in line. You know, even the times we didn't know what we were doing, we actually were doing something. You know, we knew what we were up to, even though we weren't up to anything. You know, with it, we didn't have an objective in mind. It just happened, you know. So when you actually started out uh, to go on the road... What did you travel? Where, what, what was your traveling situation? <laughs> our, our, our first thing we did when we went out on the road was uh, uh, we, we rode, rode an Eric 6.3. Yeah, and we had Bruce McCaskill was our road manager and, and guy, key guy. And he was uh, he, he would drive us. And, and it was like Eric would get the front and Carl and Jim and me in the back. You know, and then... <laughs> then we'd trade up, you know, somebody would flip a coin, somebody else got the front, you know, something got to stretch out. So, I mean, Eric didn't ride up front all the time. And uh, that was like, that was one of these tours that was like going up to Nottingham and places like this. They became long. We took the train and, and Eric's, uh, Mark uh, Mercedes Benz to uh, the gigs, but the seats were, weren't right. They were hard. And so they ch had to change out all the seats for us the next time before we went out. And uh, uh, I don't know, it was a lot of fun going out uh, with that band. You know, we're, I mean, it's an adventure. Every day, uh, well, putting that together and being a part of that whole thing, it was like it was all in motion. And all we were were the players in this thing that was already in motion. Well, it's amazing considering nowadays what you have to go through to get a tour started, to get on, to all that stuff. And you just were simply getting into a car and driving somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Driving to the gig. So what were your audiences like? Well, most of them didn't know who we were. <laughs> but see, by the time the, uh, the tour uh, uh, was about halfway through, because it was one pound. When we played in England... Uh, we did two tours, and one it was one pound for the to, to get in, and uh, 
I always say like the, um, uh, the Nottingham gig because I remember that one particular time Eric and I went in, in his Ferrari and the guys went in the Mercedes, you know, just kind of change it up a little bit. Oh, nice. And he had this Lilac 330 GTC as a 1960 uh, seven, because my mine was a sixty six, I think sixty eight. It was sixty eight. But uh, we, we took that, and no matter how you how you cut it, it was a long ride, you know, to Nottingham, you know. But uh, there were, were the the dressing room was two stories up, and it was a real old building, you know, but a, a big biggish ish venue. For England, and he parked the Ferrari outside. <laughs> it was way cool, you know. <laughs> Everybody was like real respectful and looked after everything, you know. And uh, we were in the dressing room, and it was the second floor up. And there was like a knock, like on the window, and uh, uh, it looked. There was a guy at the window. He said, "Let me in." <laughs> <laughs> so how did he get up there? They had made a, 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 a human pyramid, pyramid, and he was the top one. And so he went in, and we had some beers with him and a smoke and put him back out the window again <laughs> to do our gig, you know. <laughs> yeah, fun stuff. I'm, so I'm sure he remembers that, <laughs> doing that. Oh, it would be great to speak to that guy. Yeah, that yeah. Was. But it was it was a lot of fun and an adventure. Every time we went out, and well, once I wanted to bring my Ferrari, and it was some gig I forget where Plymouth or someplace like that. I said, "Well, hell, I'll drive. I can get there in such and such." And they said, "No, I'm come on with us." I said, "No, nah, I want to drive it." So I had my car. Man, I was hammering down the road, and uh, all I heard something go clang, 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 clang. <laughs> Uh, and I was, kept accelerating, and it would go slower and slower, and next thing you know, I'm on the side of the road. <laughs> what the hell? I looked out the, the underneath it, and the uh, drive shaft was hanging down on it. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't know what I'm going to do here. And said, As fate would have it, I just left the car on the side of the road. I was standing there, and, and uh, it was foggy. <laughs> Real foxy. And uh, as fate would have it, up pulled a cab. <laughs> I mean, I'm in the middle of nowhere on a foggy road, broke down with my, uh, my 330 GTC, and up pulls a cab. <laughs> I said, what, what? Wow, this is, this is unreal. <laughs> and he said, can I help you? <laughs> and I said, yeah, my car broke down and I'm late for a gig that we have in Portsmouth or some Plymouth or Portsmouth. And um, he said, well, I'm off. He said, I'm on, on my way to my mom's. <laughs> and he said, I'll give you a lift. <laughs> and so I rode in the cab, we pulled up at the concert, and they were already playing Sunshine of Your Love, you know. And I came in through the doors, and it was, it was really pretty cool. Everybody was clapping. And, you know. <laughs> I'm but, surprised you didn't say the milkman didn't pull up. <laughs> no, 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 it was a cab. But I have things like that happen to me, you know. I know that I've got angels looking, I know. were looking after me, you know. It's true. I know that know. I had got more than one guardian angel uh, get seeing me through those uh, uh, raucous times, you know. <laughs> raucous times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, another question, uh, it's really good, but uh, I wanted to ask you, you said that B3s were always there for you. Did you always prep those B3s before you played them? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there were B, like a B3 or an A100 or something like that, but something close to it. But I always get in the back of the organ and, and tweak it before right. I play it, because that's like, you know, a guitar player... Yeah. Getting going and getting something to make his tone right, you know, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I, I I do I get as that or as close to. Now we uh, had uh, uh, I'll take all, not all of that back, but some of it I'll I'll fill in the blanks. We had some of our own equipment, and Kevin, uh, uh, what is Kevin's last name? Redheaded guy, and on the Beatles, you know, roof concert, he's holding the 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 words for John Lennon. But he was our roadie. <laughs> and, um, so he was in the truck hauling the equipment. 
him and Baz Ward, you see. And Baz Ward wound up working for Eric for, oh, a year, 35, 40 years or something, long, long time. He's still around. Um, there's a couple of stories about how he got the gig. But <laughs> okay, and the, uh, the part of the question that I didn't ask you yet was, how do you, uh, how do you uh, configure the chords that you make and, and that sort of thing? Does that just come to you or... Because it it's pretty free form, the way you play. It, well, that's, that's it. It's, it's, exact, it's akin and exactly like painting. You know, I'm just the instrument. So I have no plan. The only plan I have is to be able to tweak the organ to get it to sound right. And then when the thing gets going, I'm just off and flowing, you know, I'm just another brush. No chord charts, none of that stuff. Oh, hell no, I can't some, read those things. You come up with some really beautiful chord changes. I listen to the, the song and the, where the, the tone of everything, everybody, everything, and everything that's going on. I listen to it and I fit the organ in there. It, uh, it's, it's, it's the rise and the fall of a, 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 it's very emotional, you know, build to a crescendo and take you to a whisper, you know, just like that. Just like that. Like you're painting. Just like painting. Just like painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, it's exhilarating, you know, painting to me. I'm exhilarated when, I, when it's finished. I mean, I'm, I got a rush now just thinking about what's on my easel uh, as, as we do this. Uh, painting does the same thing to me. It's just, it's not drugs or anything that can match anything of the pure uh, adrenaline uh, uh, rush that happens. Uh, like when you play those massive shows and stuff. There's, there's something that carries you through it, no matter if you've got a cold or, you know, or whatever it is, a sore throat or something, you always see through it. It always gets you through it. Right. You know? Well, it's probably a good thing that you are painting right now, considering the state of the music industry. <laughs> oh, yeah, well. You know, I mean, it's... It has never been good, you know. For, no, but it's... This is... It, we're seeing... We're coming, like, to, I think, to a place where things are going to break open. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I hope for the better, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. But I, I just, you know, discovered yesterday, as a matter of fact, that 70% of the sales of all records and, and all streaming is all the older artists. This is why they're buying up the old, <laughs> yeah. all the old uh, catalogs. I'm glad I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the, the new <laughs> music is not, they're not, record companies are not, are not signing new young people today. No, I, I understand. They are I understand busying it. themselves with buying up all these old catalogs. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy what's happening today. Well, it's good music, the 70s. Of and course that, it is. That period preceding and, and just following just after, it was all really good music. Well, they're up to something. <laughs> That's all I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just glad to be around and have a story to tell, you know. Uh, and we Lots keep, of them, we, we as a keep, matter of fact. We, we keep singing and playing. You know, when you find, when, you, when you're doing something, when you're led to do something, it's obvious that that's what you should be doing. Yeah. Unless you're trying to do something that doesn't match up with what you really it should It won't do. work. You know. So. Never does, you know. You know, so it was like when the painting thing came along for you, it was so natural. It was... It's like yeah, I've been doing it all never, my life. I mean, you never even thought about painting. No, uh-uh. Um, uh, always appreciated things, you know, I, but I, I thought, you know, fine art was, you know, or art period was, you know, like some of the well, you know, 14th you get, century stuff. Of course, stuff. you get different opinions, but we, we also, I, I would love people to, to look this movie up if they can, but we saw a movie called Seraphine. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. made, I don't know, maybe 2007 or something. I don't know. We got on it real late. It is in French, of course, but you can get the general idea of what's happened. Yeah. But this woman just was driven to paint. Yeah, it happened. She had nothing. Uh, painting found me. 
But uh, I mean, what happened was her heart has become like this magical thing, and she's yeah. you know all over the place. Anyway, if you can see the movie Seraphine, I just think it's yeah, really yeah, that was that uh, was that was uh, really something to see, because I can relate to it, you know, and um, it's like no matter what, you know, this this thing would take place. It would have to be. I would have to do what I'm doing now. You know, there would be no way I could not do it, you know. Right. Well, it's just another facet of creating. Yeah. It, it, like I said, painting, it found me. I, I, was a, I thought it would be you, <laughs> you know, because you're so talented with all that drawing and everything. You know, you're a great artist. And, uh, but I, 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 it never entered, much less crossed my mind to do what I'm doing now, four years later. Uh, February, I mean, April, it'll be four years. Pretty amazing. Wow. And about 2,000 paintings as well. About, yeah, about, <laughs> yeah, I, I've got my, I'm, I'm, since we're talking about that, I don't want to forget to let you know that you can check out uh, my art uh, site, bobbywhitlockart.com. Way, way cool. Coco put it together for me. I mean, it's groovy. He's got some really funky stuff going on. Um, this idea of some of my paintings, and I, I generally put them out at, uh, on my Facebook as well as different series that I'm doing. Right. And uh, been a lot of fun doing it. You know, I, I finally got down to where I was saying I just wanted to see if I could express the same thing in something this big, you know, or. 18 by 24 as I can with a 30 by 40 canvas. There's all sorts of different challenges take place for me, you know, in this painting world, you know. It's no different than musical thing, you know. You're always experimenting, trying this and that, you know. I don't sit around and play my organ because it happens so natural when I just, I can just sit down and start playing. I hadn't played in I don't know how long, but it would be like a play yesterday, you know. Mm -hmm. Follow that creative thing. Right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Sing this song. <laughs> Takes a word, man. <laughs> <laughs> to sing a word song. <laughs> I'm worried now, but I won't be worried long. <laughs> Sing me a song, honey. No, I'm the happiest guy I know. So I, I have to, that's, that's the song in my heart, you know.